Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. Melissa and I are really happy to have you here with us for this video and for this very important weekend. Now, in case you don't know why this is such an important weekend, we have this little horse race here in Kentucky that's kind of a big deal for us. And kind of around the world too. Yeah, it gets noticed pretty much around the world. In case you don't know, tomorrow is the Kentucky Derby. And you cannot have the Kentucky Derby, at least in our house, without a Derby pie. So today, we're going to make Derby pie. This is such an easy pie to make. It just is a few ingredients and you probably have everything already in your pantry or in your refrigerator. And it goes together very quickly. So let's get ready to make a Derby pie. First, you need a crust, and I will tell you that I had every intention of making a homemade crust for this pie. But, Melissa and I are meeting friends for dinner, actually an early dinner, so we're leaving soon, and we have a few errands we need to run, so instead of doing the homemade crust, I am using a Pillsbury pre-made crust. Now, I've told you before in other videos when we've done pies, I think these are really good crust. In fact, I've even made pies and take, taken places and people have said, could you tell me how you make your pie crust? So, I think they're really good. I like a homemade crust, but today that's what we're using because I'm in a hurry. So, all you have to do is take your crust out of the box and let it come to room temperature. Once it's at room temperature, you just unroll it. And I just kind of start here at the end and let it unroll itself. Then I turn it onto a floured surface. I just like to use this pastry mat. It makes it easier for me. And then I take a little of that flour and dust the top of it. And dust my rolling pin. And for this, we're using a nine inch pie plate that is not deep dish. So it doesn't need to be rolled out much. It just needs to be slightly bigger than what it already is. So I'm just going to go around a little bit. You wanna make sure you keep it fairly round. It doesn't need to be rolled out too much. And then I have sprayed my pie dish, by the way. We'll just fold that over, and I'm gonna brush some of that flour off of it. We'll lay it in our pan, open it up, and get it to fit down in there. Now, you don't want to push your dough into the corners. If you do, that makes it shrink while, when it's baking. So you just wanna pull it up and let it kinda of fall into the bottom of that pan, make sure it gets into the the corners at the bottom. Don't stretch it and push it in there. Then you can start just folding the edges over a little bit. And that just takes a little bit of patience. Get those wrinkles and all those folds out of there. It's not hard to do. Just work your way around your pie plate I like to work with it toward me instead of try to work over here. It's kind of easier if you do it toward you. Okay, then with whatever extra pie crust you have, and this is hanging over quite a bit, so I'm just gonna kind of move that over some because this side needs some over here. Okay, there we go. Now, we're just gonna take whatever extra is hanging over and fold it under. Don't cut it off, just use it for the edge of your pie crust. And that'll give you a nice crust around the edge for you to crimp. And if you don't have much, that's okay too. Just fold under whatever extra there is, if there is any. Quite a bit right there. It's okay, we'll just fold it under. And right here, there's not much, so that's okay. And once you have gone all the way around, 
then you can crimp the edge of your crust. Now you're gonna have to decide how you want to do that. You can take a knife, not a knife, a fork, and you can just press down on the edge all the way around and make, make like indentions. Or you can take your finger, actually I like to do my knuckle, and make big fluted edges around it, just like that. All the way around. And listen, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not a store-bought crust. You're doing it. So it's kind of homemade. Dare we say semi-homemade? I think I've- Partially. Partially homemade. I think I've heard semi-homemade somewhere before. And that's all you have to do to make your crust. Just flute that edge. Okay, now we don't need to bake this because a derby pie goes into an unbaked crust. So now all we have to do is mix up our filling, pour it in there, and put it in the oven. You wanna talk about the rest of the ingredients? Let's do that. I'm glad you mentioned that. So we're going to use one stick of butter melted, one cup of sugar, one half cup of all-purpose flour. Some people call it plain flour, but I call it all-purpose. And that's what it says on the bag, by the way. Two eggs, and these eggs came from one of my former students. And their farm is called l and &L. Thank you, Lily, for the eggs. We need one teaspoon of vanilla, three-fourths cup of pecan pieces, and three-fourths cup of milk or semi-sweet chocolate chips. That's your choice. Milk chocolate's gonna be a little sweeter. Either one works, it doesn't matter. Now, you can do this by hand, just in a bowl. Just put it all in a bowl and take a whisk and mix it up. But I'm gonna do it in my mixer, just because I need to get this done. So I need to scrape that out there. Let me grab a spatula here. I don't want to leave any of that butter in there. I'm going to try to do this right-handed, even though I'm left-handed, just so you can see it. Okay, that's really strange. I don't normally use my right hand. It feels awkward to you. Yeah, it feels weird. Okay, let's add our flour and our eggs, and we are going to beat those just a little. So, put them in our bowl. And notice I did not break them straight into, let me scoot that back so you can see. I did not break them straight into the mixture, just in case. We've talked about this before. You don't want to get a piece of shell or a bad egg in your dish. So you break them into a bowl and then put them in. And these should be beaten just a little bit anyway. So that's another reason to break them into a dish. Okay, that's beaten pretty well. Let's put that in. Break that out too. Let's just get it all in there. Okay, now, we, oh, we have to put our vanilla. We need one teaspoon of vanilla, and our lid is one teaspoon. So all we have to do is fill it up and put it in. Now we'll just mix this all together. Very gently, get it started here. Okay, now we'll let it run for just a few seconds. And then we will add our chocolate chips and our pecans. One thing I did not mention doing that I am going to do, I want you to look how yellow that is from those farm fresh eggs. Wow, how nice. I forgot to mention this. I am going to put my pecans and my chocolate chips in a bowl together and sprinkle in just a little bit of flour. 
maybe just a hair more, and toss those together to keep them from sinking in the pie. Grab a so all I'm gonna do is just toss those in that flour till they're coated. I could have used a spoon of the flour that I put in here, but I forgot to do it. So adding just another little spoonful of flour to this won't hurt anything, but it will kind of keep it from sinking. So let's use our spatula to scrape down our beater blade. We want all of that off there. Let me get this side. I know I'm in the way, but I want all that off there. I want to use it all. We want this pie to be full. That's another thing. I normally use a deep dish pie plate for this, but it's always a little, little empty. It's just not quite full enough for me. So I thought, okay, this time I'm going to use a regular pie plate. It may be too much this time. All right, we're gonna put those in. And now I'm just going to fold those in. I am not using the mixer for these. I'm just going to fold them until I don't see any flour remaining. And that looks pretty good. So let's go over. Oh, a little bit on the side of your bowl. That'll make a difference. Do I really? Where? You mean up here? Oh, I see what you're talking about. The flour. Get that stick of butter out of the way. Let's just scrape that off. Okay. And now we're going to put that right into our pie crust and spread it out. Now I am going to get the rest of this out here in a minute, but let me start this. And this will puff up as it bakes. So even though this looks like there's not much in it, I promise you it will, it will puff up some. Not enough for a deep dish really though. No, not really. I did a derby pie, I think about this time last year. Or was it two years ago? No, it was last year, wasn't it? And I used a deep dish, but I just, I don't know. I've never really liked the way this looked in a deep dish and I could increase the amount of filling, but you don't want it to be too deep because then it has trouble getting done and it just doesn't work as well. Okay, now we have preheated our oven to 350 degrees. I am going to put a pie shield on the edge of the pie so that the edge of the crust does not burn before the pie is done. If you don't have one of these, you can get them online, you can get them on Amazon, or you can usually get them somewhere like Walmart. Um, this one I think is called Mrs. Anderson's Pie Crust Shield. You can find them. If you can't get one of those, you don't have one, you can use a piece of aluminum foil. Just take a long piece of aluminum foil and bend it around your pie plate around your pie crust and fold it over and it works the same. Okay, so we're going into a 350 degree preheated oven for 30 minutes. Then we have to let it cool completely. This is a pie that if you cut it while it's hot, it kind of tends to run. And I'll just tell you the truth, I kind of like it gooey. <laughs> I don't like it baked until it's dry. So I tend to underbake it just a little bit, but if you cut it too soon, it will run all over the plate. Okay, in we go. Our pie has cooled completely and we have cut a piece. First, I want you to look right in here, Melissa. I want you to see how the center of this pie is just slightly gooey. It's not running, it's just oozed out a little bit. That's exactly how we like it. We like for the center to be just a little loose. You want a picture of this? 
I'm just gonna tell you, this is not only a beautiful pie, it's a delicious pie. Most of you take the first bite. Love to. I thought you would. This is one of our favorite pies. All right, babe, there you go. Mm, that is so good. It always is. Such an easy recipe and a good recipe. I've heard people say that a derby pie is just a pecan pie with chocolate chips in it. That is not the case. This is not a pecan pie. It is different. If you've never had derby pie, you really should make one. It's just too easy not to. Wow. All right, thank you so much for coming to sit at our table for this video. We do appreciate you being here. If you would, we'd appreciate you clicking that thumbs up, the like button. And if you've not before, click the subscribe button, that little notification bell beside of it in the word all. We sure would appreciate that. That helps us build our channel. Right below this video where you see the title of this recipe, it'll say Derby Pie. If you'll click where that title is in that box somewhere, that box will expand. You will find the written recipe. Melissa puts every written recipe right under our videos. And our contact information is under that. Then, of course, under that box, there is a place for you to leave a comment. And we really do appreciate hearing your comments, hearing your feedback. We just really do enjoy reading those. So feel free to leave us a comment there. Thank you again for coming to sit at our table. We appreciate every single one of you. And we want you to remember that you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day and happy Derby Day.